It seems that a majority of people say that they have never heard the voice of the Lord. <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure that is true. Now, it's not because I doubt them or their experience. It's just that I think they may not be aware of what they have heard or how they hear. There's an interesting story recorded in the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, that we should take a look at. And we heard some of it this morning. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Now Samuel had not yet come to know the Lord or the sound of his voice, so when he heard his name called, he thought it was his master Eli calling him. After the third time of this happening, it got into old Eli's mind that the Lord was calling Samuel. And so he told him to wait for the Lord to tell him what it was that he wanted. I believe there's a few instructive lessons contained in this story of which we should take note. First one is that God speaks to those who don't know him. Now, some of us may find that kind of strange, but Samuel did not know the Lord. God was speaking to him. <clears throat> God also speaks to children. Not that he only speaks to children, but he speaks to children. And a lot of times, people are not aware when that young child says something that's straight from the throne room. But if you've learned to listen to the voice of the Lord, you can recognize when God is speaking. Those spoken to may not understand. Samuel didn't understand what he was hearing. And that's what I'm saying I believe about most people who say they've never heard from God. They just don't know that they have. They don't understand that they have. And finally, a lesson we can learn from this is that God is persistent. He stayed with Samuel until Samuel was able to figure it out. Now, in the time this event happened, it was not common for the Lord to speak to everyone. He revealed his will through the mouth of his prophets and judges who then relayed the word to the people. Now, there are many today who still teach that as the only way that God speaks. They teach that your pastor, like me, is the only one who spends time with the Lord and can clearly discern the word of God. Those are the ones, though, who want people to be under their control, and I'm not one of those. I believe each and every person has the ability to discern the voice of God for themselves. Now, I find this taught in many places in the Bible, but most specifically in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 where we read, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Paul tells us here that we are to grow to the place where we are able to discern the will of God for ourselves. And that includes being able to hear God's voice. I want to give you some clues as to how to recognize the voice of God for yourself. Now there's no way, <clears throat> there's no way I can cover every instance recorded in the Bible where the Lord spoke to an individual and the circumstances surrounding that event. In fact, while I was preparing this message, I had to resist the urge to turn it into a eight to ten part series. There's just so much in the Bible about God's voice and his method and manner of speaking to human beings. My real challenge for this message, though, was which examples would be most beneficial to you. So let's begin with Adam and Eve. 
God created them in his own image, and he spoke to them. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8 we read, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The first humans were able to hear God's voice, so it is not as much of a stretch to say that God enabled all humans to hear his voice. We were created in his image. Now recall that I said God speaks to those who do not yet know him as we saw in Samuel. One of the most famous of those instances is recorded in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 where we read, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Now we tend to think of Abram as this great man of God. But Abram, who eventually renamed Abraham, actually worshipped idols at the time that God called him. We learn this from Joshua chapter 24 and verse 2, where Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham and of Nahor, and they served other gods. And we can see here that whatever God's plan might be, that plan is not dependent on the person he chooses as being of great character or being a solid believer. Remember, when God spoke to Paul, he was actively persecuting the new Christians. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 1, we read, But Paul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He was not a believer. He was opposed to the believers. Paul heard a voice. Abram heard a voice. Adam and Eve heard a voice. Samuel heard a voice. Now that's all we know. They heard a voice. What does that voice sound like? This is where it gets fascinating. We have many different experiences related to us from which we can gain some clues. In 1 Kings chapter 19, for instance, we read about Elijah, And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. Modern Christians tend to look for big, blustering events to know the voice of God, but he may not always speak that way. He certainly didn't for Elijah, who had just performed a big, blustering event in, in front of 400 prophets of Baal. He did that on behalf of the Lord. But notice though that the Lord was not in the fire. Which is what Elijah had just used to prove the power of God over idols. Yet God was in the fire for Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, And the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. When Moses turned from what he was doing to look at this strange sight, the Lord spoke to him from the bush. <clears throat> to Moses, it probably sounded like the bush was talking. God has used other types of creation to bring his message. In Numbers chapter 22, 
Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you struck me these three times? Balaam was persistent in his attempts to gain a reward that was offered by Balak, the king of Moab. But the Lord intervened even against Balaam's stubbornness. God used a donkey to get Balaam's attention. He used a burning bush to get Moses' attention. He used an earthquake, a strong wind and fire to get Elijah's attention. He used what we would call psychic phenomena to get Nathaniel's attention as we read in the gospel. So it brings up a question. What will God use to get your attention? If you learn to respond to the voice of God, he will not have to use drastic measures to get your attention. <clears throat> but it does take practice. I think I've illustrated before for you that God will first call you with that low whisper, Hey. And if you don't respond, he gets a little louder and says, Hey. If you still don't respond, he might yell, hey. And if you still haven't figured out it's God, he will use the two by four and he will get your attention. It takes willingness to act on whatever the Lord tells you in order to increase in your learning to discern the voice of God. Now, it might not be a big assignment. It might not begin that way in your learning. It could be as simple as an urge that you feel to go tell someone that they are loved and appreciated, for instance. I've told you many stories of the various times the Lord has spoken to me and given me direction or understanding about things. And I've had to learn how to respond to that initial urge, that unction, that desire, however it is that the Lord would get to me to have me do what he was after. But I began early in my walk trying to learn what it meant to hear the voice of God because I read a verse in Romans that meant a lot to me. In chapter 8 and verse 14 we read, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And when I began to break that verse down and I realized that it was emphatic that those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these and none others are the sons of God. Now, that's not talking about the universal fatherhood of God. It's talking about those, let's say, that inner circle of Peter, James, and John, the ones closer. I strongly desire to be led by the Lord because I have learned that I am highly skilled at making mistakes when I do things on my own. I've got a talent for that. But when I learn to listen to the Lord, I don't make near as many mistakes. So I hope that something in this little short thing this morning will help you in your journey of faith and give you the desire to want to know the voice of God even stronger. So, but if you don't get anything else this morning, there's, get this. From the illustrations that I've given, there is no one right way to hear from God. You can't make your experience a doctrine, a way that it has to be done. I told the Bible study group on Thursday, I believe, about how I just went one time and knelt down in front of a window and said a simple prayer. And it was a question. And I heard from God immediately. That hasn't always been the case, not even with me. But we do have a single great example in the book of Revelation that I want you to consider. In Revelation chapter 14, we read, And I heard a voice from heaven, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of loud thunder, 
The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. Now what is the comparison of harps to Niagara Falls? Do you see? John was so confused, he couldn't make a distinction to describe the voice he heard. It's an individual thing. And God will use whatever it takes for you and your personality to be able to hear his voice as guidance in your life. So I encourage you, simply let it become your desire to hear his voice in all that you do. I've given you illustrations from my life where God has spoken to me not only about spiritual matters, but about practical matters. Something as simple as repairing an automobile or a motorcycle. And I get direction. But those times only came after I gave up trying to do it myself. But God is interested in your life. And he will guide you in the way that works for you. Amen.